As promised in the previous video, where I introduced the principle of strong induction, we are going to look into some proofs where we are using strong induction to prove a specific statement. Now, let's have a look at the following statements. The positive integers can be written as a product of primes. We already spoke about this. We already have shown that we can write a positive, any positive integer as a product of prime numbers. For example, 6 is 3 times 2. 3 and 2 are prime numbers. But we want to prove this using the method of strong induction. Now, what do we want to prove? The statement that we want to prove can be written as every positive integer can be written as a product of primes. Now, the basic step is quite simple. We start with the number 2. And the number 2 is the first prime number, and it can be written as a product of itself with 1. So basically, we prove that p of t 2 is true. So for the first prime number, we can already prove the basis step. The next thing to do is to look at the inductive step. And in the inductive step, we have to look at the inductive hypothesis, which is the assumption that p of j is true for all positive integers j, and j is between 2 and k. It means that j can be written as a product of primes wherever j is a positive integer at least equal to 2 and not exceeding k. In order to prove this, we have to look at two cases. First of all, the first case is that k plus 1 is a prime number. So when k plus 1 is a prime number, we have to verify the inductive hypothesis. Can I write this number as a product of prime numbers? The second one, or the second case, is k plus 1 is a composite, composite, sorry, composite number. Now, basically, here we have a number which is not prime, and basically, any number which is not prime, we consider to be a composite, composite number. Now, when we look at it, let's first start with case 1. So let's have a look at the inductive step, step 1. Those two cases, like I spoke about, the first case is when the number k plus 1 is prime, and we look at 2, 3, 5, 7, and so on. Here we follow the same reasoning like the basis step, which look, leads to the conclusion that the statement is true because they're all prime numbers and the only way to write a prime number is one times the number itself. So basically, when k plus 1 is prime, the inductive hypothesis is true. Now, case 2 relates to all other numbers. Let's say that k plus 1 is a compositive number, and we can write it as a product of two integers, a and b, for which a and b are between 2 and k plus 1. Now, both a and b are integers at least equal to a and b, and smaller than k plus 1. Now, since they are integers, at least Two and not exceeding k, we can wrote, write both a and b as the product of primes. Following the inductive hypothesis and when k plus 1 is composite, it can be written as a product of prime, being the primes in the factorizations of a and b. And basically, this is the conclusion of this statement. We have proven the inductive hypothesis for both cases. Now, let's look at a player at the game. And, okay, I'm Belgium, we like chocolate, and I know some Swiss people may say that chocolate is better, but I always tell my students, since I'm the teacher, we're not a democracy, my axioma is that Belgian chocolate is better. Let's stop the discussion about that. We're talking about a game.
And in the game, what are we looking at? We're looking at two heaps of chocolate drops, two piles of chocolate drops, and the players take our chocolate drops from either one of those piles. Now, each pile contains K drops, and the player takes between one and K drops from one pile. And what we want to prove is that the player who removes the cho last chocolate drop wins the game, and that is the player who starts second. And basically, the player who starts second will always win. And that's what we want to prove. So this is in fact a game, and we want to see if our statement is true or not. So we prove that there are n chocolate drops in each pile, and the second player will always win the game. Now, what we want to do, first of all, is that we will use strong induction. We cannot use, prove this by mathematical induction. The basic step is very simple. When there are only n chocolate drops in each pile, the first player has only one choice to take one chocolate drop from any pile and leaves one chocolate drop in the remaining pile. What happens? Well, the second player only has one possibility. It takes the final chocolate drop and wins. This means that the basis step has been proven. Let's now look at the second element, the inductive step. And the inductive hypothesis states that P of J is true for any J, value of J, between 1 and k. It also states that the second player will always win under these conditions. Now, in order to prove the inductive step, we must prove that p of k plus 1 is true when there are initially k plus 1 chocolate drops in each pile. How do we do that? Let's say we have k plus 1 chocolate drops in each pile, and the first player removes R drops from one of the piles, and R is between 1 and K plus 1. This means that in the selected pile only remain K plus 1 minus R drops. Let's now say that the second player removes the same amount of drops R from the second pile, which results in the fact that the second pile also has R drops left, and R is between 1 and K plus 1. Now, we can use the inductive hypothesis and state that if the first player removes all K plus 1 chocolate drops from one of the piles, the second player wins by taking the remaining drops. And basically, this proves that the statement is correct, and we have our inductive proof, strong inductive proof, because we can prove this for all the values of J. So these are some examples about the strong induction and how we can apply the strong induction to proof statements that normally cannot be proven by mathematical induction. In the next video, we are going to look into a more specific area where we are going to use strong induction in computational geometry. You're doing a great job, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you, and bye-bye.